Um, I, David, I'd love to bring you into this as well. It just given that depth of experience you've had in this area, um, Jessica had just been talking about those industries um, where we are seeing some of these violations. And I wonder what sort of patterns you are seeing or what sort of trends you are seeing as well that um, that we should be aware of. Yeah, thanks, Mary Catherine. Um, and I think we all know there are always ongoing problems in some of the industries that Bridget um, and Jessica talked about where some labor with children are allowed, younger people are allowed to work some. I think what is so shocking about the current wave are these industries where we haven't seen children in large numbers working in decades and decades, meat processing, chicken processing, auto manufacturing, um, packaged food plants. You know, these are all places where I think everyone's assumptions um, this is a practice of the ancient past, and to see the numbers sort of raises the question, why is this happening? And I think one pattern in many of those manufacturing industries, and it's been part of the very creative response that I think the Wage and Hour Division has done uh, with the solicitor's office in attacking this problem, is a pattern of major companies, many of whom we know their names, uh, uh, Kia, uh, Hyundai, um, J&B Meats. Um, these are companies that have products that are, are very well known, um, have in their factories used intermediaries, something I've called in, in my work fissuring, um, to actually find people to do certain activities. So in meat processing, a company called TSSI was used by many of the major um, uh, meat processors um, to do cleaning work. Uh, PSSI, in turn, uh, which is a major company owned by BlackRock, um, operating in multiple states, um, went out rather than directly hiring workers, work through labor brokers and staffing agencies in local areas to find workers. And unfortunately, many of the workers that were tapped by these companies, these large companies to ultimately fulfill the work in places, as Jessica said, like the killing floors of uh, meat packers, um, were children and were children who were very vulnerable and um, very much in need of economic opportunities because of the conditions they found themselves and in the need in some cases to send money home to families um, in their home countries, um, paying back people who they were staying with in this country, a whole host of reasons that made these children very vulnerable and seeking this kind of work. And what I just described in meat processing is also true what happened in the auto manufacturing industry, uh, where again, intermediaries between named auto manufacturers like Hyundai and Kia work through labor brokers to find a workforce, very often those being child laborers. So unfortunately, the common denominator in, in many of the cases that the wage and hour uh, division have been undertaking the work on um, happen through these multiple chains. And often where you have the company that uh, sits at the top of these structures um, saying the classic line, oh, we would never directly hire workers, uh, children workers. We, we find that abhorrent. But because of the organizational practices they're using, uh, unfortunately, those work those those children are doing the work that um, should be um, prohibited under our law that is prohibited under our law and i think that's one of the most troubling aspects of many of these cases that uh, just explaining fissuring so consumers of conscience can actually start understanding how to stand up uh, for workers, especially for our youngest workers, uh, has, has just been a really valuable contribution to tonight's webinar and education. So thank you. Uh, 